Greetings in Christ. I'm Pastor John Fritz of Hope Evangelical Lutheran Church here in Aurora, Illinois. Welcome to our worship service for this, the first Sunday in Lent, in the year of our Lord, 2023. The theme for our service and our sermon this morning is Grace is Unfair. We begin with the Psalm of the Day, Psalm 32, verses 1 through 7. Blessed is the one whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man against whom the Lord counts no iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no deceit. For when I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My strength was dried up as by the heat of summer, Selah. I acknowledge my sin to you and I did not cover my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord and you forgave the iniquity of my sin, Selah. Therefore, let everyone who is godly offer prayer to you at a time when you may be found. Surely in the rush of great waters, they shall not reach him. You are a hiding place for me. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with shouts of deliverance. Selah. Our opening song is, What a Savior. Greetings in Christ. I'm Pastor John Fritz of Hope Evangelical Lutheran Church here in Aurora, Illinois. Welcome to our worship service for this, the first Sunday in Lent, in the year of our Lord, 2023. The theme for our service and our sermon this morning is, Grace is Unfair. We begin with the Psalm of the Day, Psalm 32, verses 1 through 7. Blessed is the one whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered, Blessed is the man against whom the Lord counts no iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no deceit. For when I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My strength was dried up as by the heat of summer, Selah. I acknowledge my sin to you and I did not cover my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin, Selah. Therefore, let everyone who is godly offer prayer to you at a time when you may be found. Surely in the rush of great waters, they shall not reach him. You are a hiding place for me. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with shouts of deliverance, Selah. Our opening song is, What a Savior.
please join me for the confession and absolution. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done, and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for Jesus' sake forgives you all your sins. Therefore, on the basis of this, your confession, I, as a called and ordained servant of the word, forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We respond to God's absolution of our sins by singing God of Grace. Testament lesson is Genesis chapter 3 verses 1 through 21. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other beast of the field that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God actually say, you shall not eat of any tree in the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but God said, you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden, neither shall you touch it lest you die. But the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. And she also gave some to her husband, who was with her and he ate. Then the eyes of both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, 
and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves loincloths. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? And he said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. He said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten of the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me fruit of the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and above all beasts of the field. On your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and her offspring. He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. To the woman he said, I will surely multiply your pain in childbearing. In pain you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be contrary to your husband, but he shall rule over you. And to Adam he said, Because you have listened to the voice of your wife and have eaten of the tree of which I commanded you, you shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you. In pain you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you. And you shall eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your face you shall eat bread till you return to the ground, for out of it you were taken. For you are dust, and to dust you shall return. The man called his wife's name Eve, because she was the mother of all living. And the Lord God made for Adam and for his wife garments of skins and clothed them. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle lesson is Romans chapter 5, verses 12 through 19. Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man, and death through sin. And so death spread to all men because all sinned. For sin indeed was in the world before the law was given, but sin is not counted where there is no law. Yet death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those whose sinning was not like the transgression of Adam, who was a type of the one who was to come. But the free gift is not like the trespass, For if many died through one man's trespass, much more have the grace of God and the free gift by the grace of that one man, Jesus Christ, abounded for many. And the free gift is not like the result of that one man's sin. For the judgment following one trespass brought condemnation. But the free gift following many trespasses brought justification. For if, because of one man's trespass, death reigned through that one man, much more will those who receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. Therefore, as one trespass led to condemnation for all men, so one act of righteousness leads to justification and life for all men. For as by the one man's disobedience, the many were made sinners, so by the one man's obedience, the many will be made righteous. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel is Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 through 11. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And after fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. And the tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, 
He will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, Again it is written, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Again the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in their glory. And he said to him, All these I will give you, if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, Be gone, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and were ministering to him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Our sermon song this morning is, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, grace is unfair. And I'm not talking about the delightful niece of my brother-in-law or any of you out there that might be named Grace. I'm talking about specifically the unmerited mercy and favor upon mankind for Christ's sake and for his sake alone. God earnestly and eagerly desires that no one be lost, not even the wicked, but he sent Jesus to be our savior, to be the second Adam, to be Israel boiled down into one man, and even the new Israel, the believing church, down in the form of one man, so that by Christ's works of perfect obedience to his heavenly Father, he could undo the works of the devil. You see, Jesus came that we might have life and have it in all its abundance. And there's a huge confusion out there in TV land and YouTube land about what the abundant life really means. The abundant life is available even to the poorest of the poor in this life, 
who repent of their sins and trust in Christ as their Savior and Lord, because living the joy-filled and satisfying life in connection with Christ as your head, as a member of his body, means that we can recognize that what we do deserve is what we confessed earlier in the classic liturgy. We deserve God's temporal, here in time, and eternal, forever and ever, and ever and ever and ever, punishment. Anything we get above that is gravy, as we used to say when I was helping truckers on their quote-unquote gravy runs, where you might have a very long drive with a little rest before having to carry tons worth of lumber and building supplies to wherever the contractor wanted it. Everything above temporal and eternal punishment that you and I and any human being receive is God's gracious and unfair gift to us. Sometimes we shake our fists at God and we want him to be exactly fair because we're looking down on somebody that we think has slighted us instead of looking up to the absolute perfection that Christ says, be perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect, or you'll never enter into heaven on your own right and in your own strength. And of course, we know that's a standard that since Adam and Eve fell into sin, no one born in the natural way can accomplish. We all inherit the death that Adam and Eve were looking at that tree which was attractive to the eye and that could give wisdom not only of good, which God had created them with, but also wisdom of evil so they could know evil intimately and they fell for it. And immediately, they didn't die physically, but they did start to die physically and they lost eternal life. And God cared enough about them to seek them out in the garden and they're hiding and they're covered with these little loincloths that they made for themselves out of fig leaves. God knew where they were and God knows where you are when you are hiding in your sin. You and I might be great at hiding. We might be great at covering up our sin. We had the opening psalm where the psalmist says, I did not cover up my transgressions. I didn't try to conceal them. But there are times when we do try to do the cover-up game. And we try to, like Adam and then Eve, blame others for our own moral failures and our sins and our transgressions. Adam blames God and then he blames Eve. Eve blames the serpent, kind of God, because he created the serpent. But God loves these fallen creatures enough to seek them out and to give them the proto-euangelion, the first gospel the promised Savior Jesus Christ, who is going to crush the works and even the head of the devilish serpent, and who is going to reopen the path to the heavenly paradise, the new heavens and the new earth, to all who repent and trust in him. You and I have challenges before us. We can look around and we can see other people who are doing better than we are financially. We can look around and see other people who might have what we consider to be perfect health. We can look around and see other people who, from a distance, the grass is greener, their house is in perfect shape. 
their family life and extended family life seems to be trouble free and we can think life is unfair because of all the presumed blessings that they seem to be enjoying. But what God does for us is give us a mirror in his law and he says examine your life in light of the Ten Commandments, for example, and Luther does a great job explaining the full weight and burden of those commandments, both the negative and positive aspects that genuine faithfulness to our Lord and adherence to the guidance of the Holy Spirit requires. But for you and for me, the general tendency is to think that life is unfair when we're feeling gypped. Not to recognize that God is being infinitely more than fair by taking our sins off us and placing them on Christ. As one of those students who used to do quite well in school, I'm not talking about Hebrew here because that was definitely a failing, but in most classes. I was one of those folks that scored well on tests and was able to study well and outperform the average student in my class. I would just hate it when we would be in those little group learning experiences where everybody had to share the grade. And you would kind of look down at those that you figured probably were going to be dragging down the curve a bit. And wonder just how unfair the teacher was being, trying to get you to work well with others. Didn't she know your kindergarten teacher wrote, does not play well with others when she noticed you barging through the wall that had been built up of those reddish cardboard blocks. However, the learning experience went, the group would get the same grade. And again, we tend to look at some people as slackers, some people as not motivated to study whatever the topic happened to be, and to kind of see ourselves as the star of the group, and think rather pridefully that we would be pulling up the grade of the entire class. Jesus, from heaven, True God from all eternity said, I will take on human flesh so that I can live perfectly before you, beloved Father, on their behalf. He was willing to take on the biggest group of losers ever, the billions and billions of us who were born in the image of Adam, and Eve, after the fall, spiritually dead, enemies of his Father in heaven. Try as we must, grace is something that we cannot earn and could never deserve. But instead, Jesus leapt into our group. You see, it's always much easier to tear down and destroy than it is to build something of significance, and especially to build something of eternal value. As Jesus was being tempted according to his human nature by Satan in the Gospel lesson from Matthew, we see Satan again and again trying to twist God's words. And here again, I give you another ad. Please refer to God's word directly and read it in context. And there's great blessing if you go to the expanded version of Luther's small catechism and you read the real insights there 
for reading God's word in context and for why we believe what we believe. Christ battled Satan one-on-one. -on -one. There's all of us billions of losers out there who couldn't win that fight, not even stand for a second. As Luther would later write, with might of ours cannot be done, soon were our loss effected. But for us fights the valiant one whom God himself elected. Christ Jesus our Lord was willing to join the group of all of us spiritually dead enemies of his Father in heaven, all of us slackers, all of us self-righteous oafs, and spiritual fools. And he was willing to take his righteousness and clothe us and all who receive him as Lord with his righteousness, which is a much better fit than the skins God used to cover and clothe and protect Adam and Eve. You and I can be blessed by the understanding from the Holy Spirit that grace is unfair, that God does not give us what we deserve, our temporal and our eternal punishment, that instead he is much more than fair, infinitely more than fair because of what Jesus did for us. Clothed in his righteousness alone, we can stand before God's throne and have the peace of God which surpasses all human understanding because it's not based on what we've done, but it's based on God's unfair grace to mankind in the person and work of Jesus Christ. Amen. Please join me in the prayers of the church. Dear Lord Jesus, you were tempted in all ways as we are, yet without sin. As the second Adam in Israel and the church boiled down to one man, you battled Satan and defeated his every attack, subtle and gross. Adam and Eve fell into sin, destroying the perfect eternal destiny for which they were created and that of all their offspring. Your active and passive obedience on our behalf built an eternally blessed future for all who trust in you. Move us to so revel in your grace that our faith is firmly established and eagerly shared. Give President Biden and world leaders wisdom and sanctified common sense in these perilous times, bringing peace to our world. Bless Christian mission around the world, and according to your omniscient, gracious, and good will, aid the earthquake victims in Turkey and Syria, and heal those we name in our hearts. Amen. Please join me as we confess the faith that saves for all who actually believe it in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 
Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be and abide with you all. Amen. Our closing song this morning is My Hope is Built on Nothing Less. Oh!